My name is Annalise Warhink. I am an archivist at the Montana Historical Society, and we are in the exhibit hall of our newest exhibit, Good Beer Here, Montana's Brewing History. The exhibit looks at the brewing industry in the state of Montana from the territorial period all the way up to modern times. Uh, the history pretty much starts um, from the time that people began to come to the state of Montana for mining activity in the 1850s and 60s and moves through the early territorial times to um, the establishment of towns and various communities across the state. Um, it moves into the Prohibition era and how that impacted not just the brewing industry but um, the agricultural industry and um, Montana's economy as a whole. It then moves into uh, those breweries that were able to come back after Prohibition and produce their beer in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And then it looks at the uh, rebirth of the brewing industry in the 1980s goes into the 1990s and focuses on the uh, fight to legalize the on-site sale of beer through tap rooms in the state of Montana. And then it brings us into modern times with the, with the current breweries and the, the role that tap rooms play in the state of Montana. We were able to get um, some good early uh, brewing artifacts that we have in both our collections and then um, on loan from from Virginia City and uh, from our friend and, and board member Steve Lozar. Um, a lot of these are, uh, artifacts are from uh, either the Gilbert Brewing Company or the Kessler Brewing Company, which was here in Helena. Uh, these items right here are a perfect example of a lot of the equipment that brewers used to brew beer around the turn of the century or prior to the turn of the century. Um, and of course, everyone recognizes the kegs, but you can also see different vats and other um, uh, mechanisms that allow for them to produce and to package their beer and distribute it across the region. One of the great things about this exhibit is we have a number of photographs included throughout. Um, they are all from our collection right here at the Historical Society in the photo archives and it shows um, the the people of the state working for all of these breweries. I think this is a great example of um, how communities oftentimes were either centered around, um, well in this case they were centered around the East Helena Beer Hall and all these men coming together to spend time sharing a drink, playing cards, and it was often in close proximity to other rooming houses in the community. Um, and uh, it just, it shows how everything was centered around the beer. Mm -hmm. Many people recognize the name Kessler when they think about Montana beer. Kessler Brewing was one of the largest breweries in the state of Montana and it was located here in Helena. Um, it started originally, uh, it, it was originally called Ten Mile Brewing Company and they did change it to Kessler Brewing once Nicholas Kessler took over operation. Um, they were, um, you can still see what was their brewery um, over by Spring Meadow Lake to this day and they um, were a huge producer of, the, of beer in the state for many decades. They were one of the largest manufacturers of beer in the state of Montana through the 1940s and unfortunately um, following the 1940s but in the 1950s like so many other breweries across the region um, they were forced to shut down as competition for the larger domestic breweries just really made it difficult for them to get their beer out um, and, and make a profitable um, product. So a lot of the people that came to the state of Montana during the, the uh, early years, um, during the boom years, came from uh, Europe, mainly um, Ireland and Germany, and a lot of them brought with them their brewing practices and their recipes, and that uh, played into the, um, the early rise of brewing beer in the state. They were doing what they loved and what they knew, and um, it, for them, it was comforting to know that they could still drink something from their homeland, even though they were thousand mi thousands of miles away from home. One thing that I think is very common with um, 
beer bottle labels from early years up until now is how artistic and colorful they can be. And I think these labels right here are a great example of the use of text and layout and colors to really pop um, and really jump out to the consumer to when they're trying to figure out which beer they, they would like. So here's some more great examples of uh, beer bottles still on the labels. You can see um, the various styles of the bottle themselves and then um, the use once again of the color and the text and the layout to uh, really add some flair to the bottle itself and um, each of them you can see uh, if you were here you could get a, a close-up view of them and see exactly where these bottles all come from but they are all from various breweries uh, that were in the state of Montana prior to prohibition. During prohibition a lot of the breweries chose to either completely shut their doors altogether or switch to producing a non-alcoholic drink. Many of them went to either making soft drinks or they produced dairy. Um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the equipment that's used to brew beer can also uh, double to either produce pop or produce uh, dairy products. So a lot of them turn to that. Um, so here's some examples of, of labels for non-alcoholic drinks such as ginger ale. The great thing about these boxes is it really does show how geographically spread out um, the breweries were. You have everything from Kalispell to Missoula, Butte, and then of course over to Billings. So it was, it was spread out across the state of Montana. Another great thing about the exhibit is you can really see the evolution of the uh, bottling and canning products that have been used in, in breweries over the years. So a lot of these look like um, the type of beer bottles that you see today, but then we also have these great uh, canned beer that um, have the twist top similar to the way that a glass bottle would. So a lot of the times the brewers would produce little knickknacks or tchotchkes um, with their logos and stuff as giveaways to try and make sure that people were always thinking about uh, their, their beer. Um, and so we have some great ones on display, um, including some salt and pepper shakers, a wallet, um, a sewing kit, really stuff that you would find yourself using on a day-to-day -day basis. And this was just kind of one way to entice people to really uh, um, think about specific beers when they were trying to figure out which beer that they wanted to purchase. Nowadays, rather than producing little knickknacks like salt and pepper shakers, uh, breweries try to entice uh, consumers by um, putting very uh, catchy and colorful um, tap handles in the bars that people can use as uh, not just name recognition but you know as visual recognitions of the type of beers that they have on tap. You can see the type of tap handles that breweries have used to kind of solidify their image and their brand. Nowadays a great way that breweries along with their tap handles, uh, get their name out to others in the community is through um, making unique coasters with their logos uh, printed on them. And, and so this is a good example here of the types of coasters and stickers that have been produced by breweries across the state of Montana. A lot of breweries have been um, have become very creative with their label designs on their beer. and. So much like those early breweries used bright colors and and text and um, layout to capture people's attention, the same practice is still in use today with modern breweries. And so this here is a good uh, example of just the type of variety that um, breweries have used to, to capture people's attention. The beer industry impacts more than just the beer drinkers of the state. Uh, there is a relationship between the beer industry and the agricultural industry. Um, there is a great symbiotic relationship between the brewers getting their products from the barley and the wheat 
uh, growers of the state and then in turn oftentimes a lot of breweries will give their spent grain back to um, the ranchers who can use it as feed for their stock. Uh, Montana is one of the largest producers of malting barley um, in the world and our barley is not only utilized by local breweries but it is um, in fact used in some of the largest domestic beers um, in the world and so we we take pride in our barley industry and we thought that it definitely needed to be included in this exhibit and then also the tourism industry has really been um, impacted by the breweries where a lot of people will actually plan their trips through the state around visiting specific towns with breweries and experiencing the different beers that each have to offer and other things that have been done to help in, um, encourage more of that tourism are uh, things like the creation of the Montana Beer Passport, which uh, people can purchase at any brewery across the state of Montana, and they uh, will collect stamps at each of the, the breweries as they visit them. Um, and we do actually have on display uh, an example of a completed um, uh, passport that was um, completed by a, a local Montanan, and um, it's definitely a, a point of pride for anyone who's, who's been able to complete the passports to say that they have actually been to all the, the breweries in the state of Montana. This, this project actually began as an oral history project, and it looked at the modern brewing industry in the state, particularly the fight to legalize um, the on-site sale of beer through tap rooms. And one um, thing that happened in the 1990s was that the brewers of the state um, actually came together and fought, and not just in 95 or the 97, but they fought three times. And it wasn't until the 1999 session that they were actually able to legalize the on-site sale of beer. And from that came what some people see as very backwards uh, restrictions on breweries, such as the, the um, the hours that you can serve beer, how much you can serve, and how much a brewery can produce a year to actually legally sell on site. Um, and so the oral history project looked at, th at, that, at th those stories. Um, and we have actually, um, so there are excerpts from the oral history project included in the exhibit that help explain those stories. The act of drinking beer has always been very communal in the state of Montana, from the tied houses of those early breweries that were essentially bars that were financed by the brewery um, to uh, sell their beer on tap to the modern day tap room. It's, been, it's always been a community hub um, that people can come together from various walks of life and sit down and enjoy a beer together. And the, uh, that is very evident in not just the larger towns that can manage multiple breweries, but even to those smaller communities, such as those in eastern Montana, where even a, a community of a thousand people or so can actually support a brewery because it serves as a cultural hub.